Nightly greetings one and all. William Theo here, homegrown to be bringing you the latest major events breaking all over the planet and within the 24-hour news cycle. Atop PTV's early leaderboard, the Dragon Slayers trial in Hong Kong. Ransack shops and stores along the protest route to draw Hong Kong cops, push them closer to where the bombs are laid out along the route and seize their firearms after the blast. This was the gist of the modus operandi defined in the charge filed by Hong Kong security force against 14 Hong Kong residents dubbed the Dragon Slayers in their trial that kicked off earlier today. They have been accused for allegedly planning to carry out a bomb attack to murder police officers during the 2019 pro-democracy protests. Even worse, the 14 have been charged under the Anti-Terrorism Act the first time it has been invoked and carries even harsher punishments. By the end of last year, over 11,200 had been arrested with more than 3,000 charged over their participation in the tumultuous pro-democratic protest of 2019. The trial is expected to last for two months. Mystery and suspicion hang over the death of Vladimir Putin's political nemesis Alexei Navalny since Russian authorities announced his demise over the weekend. Putin's reticence and non-action plus Russian authorities' refusal to yield Navalny's body to his loved ones or medical examiners for autopsy for autopsy purposes rather has fueled an avalanche of speculation and hypotheticals. Practically, the entire Western world and Europe placed the blame entirely on Putin and his minions presiding over his incarceration. In many parts of Russia, to include Moscow, police have cracked down on those wishing to assemble and pay homage to the fallen Navalny, herding them into squad cars and police vans before their numbers could mount and their voices and protest actions get louder and streamed online. Of late, Russian authorities reportedly probing Navalny's demise have told his mother that the inquiry or investigation into her son's death has been extended indefinitely. A spokeswoman for the Navalny camp says the probe extension is indefinite with the cause of death still undetermined. She also says the Russian authorities are lying and playing for time. Meanwhile, much of the support for Ukraine in funds and firepower in its war against Russia are not entirely from Europe and the United States. A substantial chunk is derived from Asia, from Japan particularly. Earlier today, Japan even cemented its continued support to Ukraine in a conference at Tokyo that brought hundreds of businessmen, leaders and government officials from both nations together. Japan's Premier Fumio Kishida declared the promotion of economic reconstruction is not only investment for Ukraine's future, but also for Japan and the entire globe. He also promised to relax visa controls and the opening of the Japan Trade External Organization office in Kiev soon. For his part, Ukraine Prime Minister Denis Shimhal said some 50 agreements were inked between both countries to include an intergovernment all convention on the avoidance of double taxation. Since Russia's war against Ukraine began early two years ago, Japan has pledged over 10 billion in financial and humanitarian aid to Ukraine. In a joint report issued last week, the United Nations, European Union and World Bank estimates $486 billion to rebuild Ukraine in the next 10 years. And at this moment, let's turn to my PTV colleague in Pine City Studios for the latest development brewing in the Cordilleras. Ala. Na imbag Arabi Pilipinas, kaduan ang lokal na gobyerno di Cordillera ti awanan pa ilang iti approve local public transport route plan a kasapulan iti nananay nga implementasyon ti PUV modernization program. Iti datos ti LTFRB sa nga pulukat siyam laang ang lokal na gobyerno iti Cordillera ti naprobaranan ti LPTRP na kaduan iti probinsya ti Benguet. Iti sidong ti PUVMP, mandato dag iti lokal a gobyerno amang sagana iti bukod a LPTRP para iti epektibo a panakipaay ti land transport service iti publiko. Agzerb ni ti LPTRP kas blueprint ti road network kan dag iti detalya iti kasapulan a bilang ti PUV units ngagzerb iti may sa munisipyo weno probinsya. 
tumultulong ti LTFRB car kadagit ang kasapulan a lokal a gobyerno. Continuous pa rin yung compliance ng mga uh, LGUs natin. Actually, yung mga iba po is under evaluation na po ng central office. It would take time because uh, nasa ano po kasi nasa LGU po yung bola on studying yung needs of the local government. Iti sa Balipay Adamag nakapasan iti Committee on Legislative Franchises, EJ Camara, tigakat a mang pabaru iti prangkisa ti Benguet Electric Cooperative. Na ito din gamin nga agpaso intun March 2028 ti agdama a prangkisa ti kooperatiba ng PAID ti National Electrification Administration. Mang namnama ti Beneco a makabirok da kadag iti senador a mang isakad mot iti panakipasa ti gakat ti Jay Senado. Agtultul iti signature campaign para iti manifesto of support iti gakat. Ngayon, awis mo iti panagpirma dag iti member consumer, iti declaration of support kadag iti collection centers, kan iti headquarter iti kooperatiba ijay South Drive. Kailangan na resolution of support kasi minsan may mga na-overwhelm, uh, hindi kami marunong mag-gumawa uh, ng resolutions, mga ganun. Pwede ba letters? Pwede, pwede po. Maski sumulat po kayo na you are uh, member consumer owner ng Beneco and you support the franchise renewal of Beneco. Pwede, pwede din po yun. Dagita Lagi ti damdama ang manipo dito ay PTV Cordillera. Shock ni Ala Sunduan. Naimbag, Arabi. Thank you, Ala. And that's a wrap for tonight. We look forward to you joining us here again tomorrow, same time, same location on your remote and browser for more of the same. William Theo wishing you all a restful night ahead.